I, I didn't know I wanted to get into film. I did not know that. I just kind of got bit by the film bug. I actually started as a dancer. Um, I moved to New York in 93 from a small town in Michigan. And my dream was to dance with Madonna, Michael Jackson, Paul Abdul. It was, of course, during the early 90s. Uh, I actually, two years in New York, I got hired and I toured with Michael Jackson as one of his backup dancers wow. for the MTV Music Awards and Soul Train and we traveled and it was an incredible, incredible two years of my life dancing with Michael Jackson. Like I was just bored so I bought a camera. I've been choreographing for a long time. I thought, oh maybe I'll direct music videos. So I started messing around with the camera and I just, I just became obsessed. So, Brian, tell me, if somebody asks you what you do, what is your answer right now? Well, if somebody asks me what I do, I say a lot of dif different things. But primarily, I'm a visual artist. Uh, I love photography. I love video. I love editing. Anything that has to do with visuals. I love putting, I call it poetic truth. I love poetic, <laughs> dramatic mm -hmm. scenes. Um, Lots of slow motion stuff. So I would say I'm a visual artist at heart. And how is your day to day right now? My day is wonderful. I'm alive. <laughs> uh, I, I try to be very That's optimistic, important. very optimistic, even though things are crazy right now, there's, there's something there to be learned. So I, I try to stay optimistic and, and I always ask myself, what can I learn from, from this situation? Mm -hmm. And you are working in one project, two projects, multiple projects, or with client? Um, well, I have a studio. This is my studio, as you can see. Uh, I do a lot of photography as well, but primarily we are in production for Follow Lead Love, which is a new documentary that I'm working on. We just finished Amy's Victory Dance. That's now in all the film festivals, and it's actually winning a lot of things, which I'm very excited about. Uh, but now we're we're finishing up Follow Lead Love in the next few months. We'll start editing. That's great. And how did you start it in the production? I actually started as a dancer. Um, I moved to New York in 93 from a small town in Michigan. And my dream was to dance with Madonna, Michael Jackson, Paul Abdul. It was, of course, during the early 90s. Uh, I actually, two years in New York, I got hired and I toured with Michael Jackson as one of his backup dancers wow. for the MTV Music Awards and Soul Train and we traveled and it was an incredible, incredible two years of my life dancing with Michael Jackson. And I worked with a lot of different artists. I started choreographing and in 2001 I got to choreograph for Michael Jackson for the special at Madison Square Garden. The one with Whitney Houston and Usher and Missy Elliott and I was. that was my baby. I choreographed that show. Wow. From there, I think I just was bit by the I start I bought a camera to do like I was just bored, so I bought a camera. I've been choreographing for a long time. I thought, oh maybe I'll direct music videos. So I started messing around with the camera and I just I just became obsessed. And I started doing music videos and it eventually led to documentary work something with substance and story and, mm -hmm. you know, a little bigger than just the commercial world. Mm -hmm. That's why you, the last project and this project is related with dancing and these topics yes. are because you came from that, right? Absolutely. I mean, dance is really, I mean, it's universal. It's transcending. It really saved my life. Dance did, you know, I come from my father passed away. That's when I started dancing. And I, I just, I, I just fell in love with the art form. It really does heal people, the arts. And I think that's what we're really trying to instill in our films, Amy's Victory Dance and Follow Lead Love through dance. You know, it's supposed to be non-political. It's supposed to be transcending and, and empathetic. And these are the things that I found in my dance classes and with my teachers and the things that I've done. So I'm trying to like have a little thread line of that in the films that we do just feels wow. good when you dance because you have to be in the moment when you're you know you're doing choreography mm -hmm. when we dance with Michael you, you really have to be in the moment to feel good about your performance if you're thinking too much or if you're if you're not in the present moment you know there's no joy there 
but when you really find that place of you know the music and the dance and, and you're really in that moment it's just it's really transcending well it's like editing right because you, when you edit you need to be in that moment yeah yeah in Absolutely. that process in that flow right, right. Okay. yeah well as an artist i think sometimes with with editing it gets tedious because you know editing it's very you just have to look at the numbers and the music and there's a lot of different things but mm -hmm. um when it all comes together like with the last film i did when we watched the last take it was just it really changed my life to see i put two and a half years into this now it's four years from that last film to see how it changed her life and who she is now compared to when she started is just incredible. And with Follow, Lead, Love, it's, it's, it's just as big, if not bigger, with the concept of what's going on in the world today. Mm -hmm. And what are your roles in, in the project right now? Ooh, a little bit everything. of everything. <laughs> uh, well, Brian Rubiano, the producer, came to me and asked me if I would direct this because you know they saw the last film that I did. And I know, actually I know both of the subjects from the dance world, Christine mm -hmm. Bendel and Abdiel Jacobson. And I know they're phenomenal dancers. And, and once I found out what, what it could be about, I, I definitely joined. And right now I'm the director. I will be editing as well. Hopefully we have some assistance and some more people that can help. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens with financing. <laughs> But regardless, I do it all if I have to. I don't produce, I don't ever want to produce. It's a very hard job. And I just don't, it's very hard to think that way for me. I like to be on the creative end of things. Mm -hmm. And what do you wish you had known when you started out? As far as with this film, with this follow in love. I, more in the in your career as a director, uh -huh. from the moment that you brought that camera and you start to film and if you look to that moment and now, what do you wish you had known? I mean, if I have to go back to when I first started, I mean, you are where you are. So if things would have been different, maybe I wouldn't have chose this path. So I don't really have any regrets because I feel like I was where I was and I needed to be there. I've always been inspired to do, I, I didn't know I wanted to get into film. I did not know that. I just kind of got bit by the film bug and I mean, I wouldn't change anything. I think it happened as it's supposed to. And I think if you just keep working hard and you put enough time into anything that you do, you just become a mm -hmm. master at it. So I, I just kind of became obsessed with filmmaking just in the last five years. Right. So uh, and in right in this moment, you also uh, work in choreographies and all these job or you switch to? No, I, I, I made the decision probably about eight years ago, I had a back injury. And that's when I had this moment in my life, what am I gonna do? I can't really dance. I had to take four or five months off. I couldn't even walk because I had herniated disc. And I was really out. And I was like, I can't teach, what can I do? And I thought I was gonna be an agent for dancers or something like that. And then mm. I just, I tried it, I didn't like it. And I thought, I'm gonna go back to school. I'm gonna try some photography classes or, or directing classes. And, As soon as I went back to school and took some of those classes at School of Visual Arts in New York, I was done. I loved it. I was obsessed with it. My directors, my teachers there, it was just a great experience. And did you finish some program there or it's just a few No, No, it's, it's, it's actually called continuing education. Like you can okay. go back and get a degree, but mm -hmm. I didn't really care about that. I don't think you need a degree. I didn't get a degree in dance. I just studied my butt off and then I started implementing and I, took from really good teachers. So they were like pick up classes. You could go in and take, you know, a whole semester or two years of classes, but you're mm -hmm. not graded. There's no certificate at the end. I don't need a certificate. I mm -hmm. have my Emmy nominations on the wall. I'm good. Right. That is your <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I did the work. Um, I'm still doing the work. Right. And I, I trying to, understand better why you switch why you said okay i love moving images what is this something that move you to do this in this industry 
there, there actually was a turning point. Um, originally, I was thinking to direct just music videos. And I love being in the middle of everything. Because as a choreographer, you're really focused on the dancers, the choreography. But as a director, mm -hmm. you're in charge of everything. You, you are responsible for the final product. So I started doing some music video stuff. And I did quite a few music videos. And I did shot some myself. I directed most of them. But when I met Amy, the subject from the last documentary, and I heard her story, I mean, long story short, she got hit by a bus in New York and it completely crushed her leg and they were gonna amputate and we're the same age and she's a dancer and I had a career, but she never had a career because of this bus, bus accident. So they fixed her leg, so to speak, or at least she could walk on it, but she'll never dance again. But she, you know, she, she got herself back together and she started a dance company. And I just thought she was so inspirational because I don't know what I would have done if that happened to me. You know, I wouldn't have danced with Michael. All my dreams wouldn't have come true as a dancer. So I wanted her to have an outlet to have that moment. I wanted to give her the spotlight that she never got. Because she's an artist and she always wanted to dance. She never got to do that. So in the film, she goes back and she dances on stage once again since the accident. Her first time on stage. Wow. So I got goosebumps just thinking about that <laughs> yeah. moment. But you know, I mean, she got run over by a New York City transit bus. Completely crushed her. Right, it's just incredible. And that's when I really fell in love with, you know, it's not about me being on stage, it's about telling somebody else's story. And it's a mm -hmm. huge responsibility because I really want to make sure that I tell the truth. Um, of course, I don't want to upset her, but I, I just have to tell the truth of what this situation is. And, and she's my hero. And I wanted to show the world what you can do if you put your mind to it. Wow. And what are you curious about right now? I mean, I'm studying other things. Are you reading something? Are you thinking about creating new things? Honestly, right now with society and the way everything is going, with Follow Lead Love, the reason I took this project on was because yes, I am a white dude. Um, I am the white perspective and I wanted to learn more about it about racism, about political things. And there's a lot of politics and racism, even in the dance community. Hmm. You know, I mean, you look at Broadway, it's, it's Disney, at least back in the day, especially in the 90s, it was like a full cast of Caucasian white people. And then you would have like one Asian and one Latin or black dancer. So I was like, that's not fair. That's why is it always like this? And so hmm. even in, in the world, you look at the world the way it is today, it's like that in the dance world too where you're supposed to be safe in the arts. It's supposed to be liberal, it's supposed to be equal, but we don't live in an equal world right now. So I wanted to do some research and just check myself that I could be a part of this movement. Even though I am coming from the white perspective, I'm always learning, I'm always growing, and I wanna be an ally. I don't wanna be ignorant. I mm -hmm. wanna be part of this movement and I wanna help my brothers and sisters that were always there for me. That's so great. And we need more, right? We need more of this. <laughs> we need everybody. We need, mm -hmm. we need everybody because that's what this film, why I'm so in love with Follow Lead Love, because it teaches, at least from my perspective, it's about empathy. If you put yourself in someone else's position, if you had to swap places, how would you feel? And people are so selfish and fearful. And, you know, where I'm from, the town that I'm from, in, in Michigan, it can be very racist. It can be very homophobic. Can, if you're different, you don't fit in. And growing up as a gay man, I always felt different, but I could at least hide that. I could hide the gay thing, which is sad in itself, but you can't hide being black. You can't hide being a female. You can't hide being Asian. You can't hide these things. So I don't, I want to be an ally. I want to promote equality and empathy and that's what this film does especially with the world it's just so ugly right now the world is so ugly right now it's all been COVID has really peeled back all the layers and you're seeing it but there's good out there it's gonna happen it's gonna yeah it's, it's gonna if not we'll just keep making more films because <laughs> I want to be a part yeah. of the, the solution mm -hmm. yeah we need more filmmakers to tell yes. new stories and 
What do you think is a good message for somebody that is starting in the film making industry and wants to make film and uh, maybe maybe it's in the same situation as you a few years ago like it's in other industry and thinking to get a camera and just record what do you think is a good message for them my first message is you really need a team i mean i was uh when i took on amy's victory dance i was really doing everything myself and i know it's hard at first because of budget because of this or that But with this project, Brian's the producer. Like it's just, it's so much, you get so much more out of your day when you have a team, even a small team. So I would say, don't do it yourself, get a team and people you trust. Secondly, don't be fearful and don't criticize your work too much. Get out there and do it. Just do it and put it out there and grow from it. I think a lot of the social media stuff, everyone's trying to be perfect and put their best face on. And your best face is in life. You know, there you have some good work, you have work that you go, oh, I wish I would have done that different, but, you know, I learned something from it. So it's still part of who you are as an artist. You don't always have to be perfect. So I would say, you know, and I've, I've never been afraid of that. I would just compete, I would shoot. I wasn't fearful of that type of stuff. I'm like, I'm an artist. This is who I am. I'm still growing. But at least I'm putting it out there and I'm putting the work in. Thank you for this message. It's pretty important, I think, and powerful for those that are starting and like thinking about if it's a good career or not, because also it's changing a lot with, just as you mentioned, social media and new streaming platforms. There are, it's changing, but the idea of uh, just keep doing, right? If it's your passion, then it's not work. If it's your passion, then do it. Don't, the money will come. Because if you're, you could be doing something for a lot, like when I was going to be an agent, yeah, the money was there, but I was really unhappy. So, I mean, at the end of the day, mm. I'm going to remember these projects, these films, these things, not how much money I made at the end of the day. So, if you really are passionate about your work and you have a good team, it's going to happen. At least it did for me, and it's happening. But I don't really worry about the money. I worry about the, the product and, and what it means. Thank <laughs> you.